hey, what y'all doing? I went after I colored my hair earlier and I got some new conditioner and it was supposed to be for dry hair and my hair is so dry y'all so I used it and it made my hair kind of like I don't know a little like greasy not greasy to where it looks greasy but greasy like it's not like wherever I curled it before it is just not staying I don't understand I mean, it holds a curl, you would think that it would hold. We are inside the house and probably going to get a lot of visitors. One of them being Tootie. <laughs> She's my little itty bittiest one. Let's see. Anything else here? Yep, that's, a, that's fruit. Her name is Tootie, but I call her Rudy Tootie, or Fruit, Rudy Tootie, Fresh and Fruity, so Fruit for short. Anyway, I was going to try to go live, but it says that I can't go live for some reason, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research. This is all research, 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 trying to figure all this stuff out so I can try and make some better videos for y'all. So I wanted to touch base because I have to figure out how to edit these things so that when I screw up something and I'm editing, there's a cat ear. <laughs> You can, oh, there goes a cat body. Um, so when I screw something up, I can put some verbiage in there to say what the actual correct thing is. Or when I remember what it is I was trying to talk about, I can like put that in there. So, anyway, in the last video, I was talking about when I left for California, how I left the house I said to the guy that I sold it to or the guy I was going to sell it to and I was never going to sell the house. I meant the guy that I was just leaving it to. You know, the friend of mine's son that was going to take care of it for me. So, you know, he would pay the mortgage and do everything just like he lived here. And that way I could go try to start my life in California without having to worry about paying a mortgage and all that fun stuff so that's that was that and then there was another video that I saw where I was trying to figure out what I was saying I'd forgotten my I lost my train of thought and what I was trying to get to was that I didn't even know I was hyper until I started talking to some friends of mine and I asked my parents and I was like do y'all think I'm hyper and everybody was like duh like apparently it has been obvious to the whole world and I just had no idea so there's lots of stuff I've been discovering I've been on the self-help journey for quite a while now um, and in the video earlier where I was talking about going to California I missed out on a lot of details because I'm kind of a like short blunt to the point person and so it's hard for me to add details or talk about things you know like your storytelling which is very different than the way I tell a story so I forget these little nuances like the whole reason I had brought up that he was a thief is because on the way there and I didn't you know realize it right at first and he didn't let me know right at first but he was taking things from every gas station and every place every place that we went 
whether it was, you know, hats or candy or sausage or I don't know. I mean, he was taking all kinds of stuff. He took jewelry from a Cracker Barrel. I mean, I didn't know he was taking this stuff. And then about, I don't know, probably three quarters of the way there, when he took that stuff from the Cracker Barrel, when we had left and we were, I don't know, about an hour down the road, he showed it to me. And I'm like, what, where did you get that? And then he started laughing and then he started telling me and then he started bringing out his show and tell to show me all the things that he had taken every time we stopped somewhere. And I, I mean, I'm a nervous wreck. Like, I don't have a criminal bone in my body. Like, I might be wild and I might be crazy. But I'm not a criminal. And that stuff just made me nervous as all get out. And so here I am driving out in the middle of nowhere with literally every single thing I own. And all my critters. And he's going to be stealing stuff. And I'm thinking, oh my God. You know, people are going to call the cops. We're going to get pulled over. I'm going to go to jail in the middle of nowhere. Nobody's going to know I'm here. Like, y'all. To say that it was stressful does not even begin to, I don't even know if this curling iron is going to fix this. It's not, you know, just zhuzhing it up before I even brush it. I can tell this is like, it's not working. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I was so mad at him. I was threatening him with his life by the time, <laughs> by the time we got almost there. I, I got to the point where I was like, don't even get out of the car. Don't even get out of the car. Because I swear to God, if you take one thing, if I see you do one thing, I'm going to lose my mind. It was like, y'all. <sighs> Look at this. It's just not, I mean, it acts like the curling iron's not even hitting it. Whatever this conditioner is, it's magic if you don't want your hair to curl. Like, if you just wanted to have straight hair, this would be perfect. Which I've never wanted to have, by the way. I don't like the straight hair thing. I wish that style would go out already. I am so ready for, like, some 80s big hair to come back. Like, like, boy band big hair. Like, way up high big hair. I'm ready for it. You know what else I'm ready for? Guys, normal jeans. You know, like when I grew up, you could actually see a guy's butt. Like, I don't think I've seen a guy's butt in... Oh my God. When was the last time I saw a guy's butt? I don't even know. Because they wear these baggy things, y'all hanging and slagging or sagging or whatever the crap it is. I don't like it. I'm ready to see some butts, y'all. I mean, I might be getting a little bit older and all that stuff, but my eyes work just fine. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so to go back to the trip to Cali, what else did I leave out on that one that I was going to tell y'all? Well, <laughs> first of all, it was in Ikea, Rio. The trip was in Ikea, Rio. I put so many miles on that Kia Rio, and then I sold it. And when I sold it, the guy that bought it was going to be putting it on a boat. It was going to Puerto Rico or maybe somewhere even further. It might have been going to Mexico. It was going to be a cab somewhere. <laughs> so I was like, great. I mean, I put a full seven or eight years running that car to the ground. That was my courier car. Um, and I did, I don't know, I think I did on average... 400 or 500 miles a week 
so that car had a lot of miles on it but it was a good car but so you know it had a back seat and we had all the critters and everything so the back seat went down so I just started like laying all my clothes in on top of you know the folded down seat and then it raised everything up to where the roof of the car was right here and there was just enough room that all the cats could walk on top of the clothes and then they could like jump on down to the seats right behind the front seat to, to use the litter box or the, you know, the food and water if they wanted to, but what y'all know from the last video, they didn't do that. They went on strike until it was time to go uh, inside a hotel. Anyway, so that was, that was um, how I got there and who I got there with. And he ended up so I eventually, I didn't make it in California, obviously, because I'm back in Texas. I was trying to get a job at a casino there. I, it was going to pay so much money. When I found out what you could get by working up in the VIP lounge uh, for the people that were playing on these tables and don't ever leave the tables. And whenever they win, they get happy and um, bless you and I tried so hard and it was right at that time where like my whole life every time that I wanted to get a job I just went in and applied like a normal person I always got an interview that day if I didn't get an interview I didn't even go to the job and I always got hired on the spot so <laughs> this whole new internet craze was starting to take over really strong and only applications were coming in from the internet. So you're in a stack with people that were applying, you know, from all over the world, thousands and thousands of applications. Like, how am I going to stand out? Plus, I was already getting older. I mean, so if that was 10 years ago, I was already 42. And, you know, they probably want 20 year olds up in there. But um, I thought, I've got to. I've got to somehow get an inside, you know, it's who you know, right? And I didn't know a lot of people, obviously. I mean, I knew my roommate and her nephew, and I knew my roommate that was up there, and I knew the person that I brought with me, and he eventually brought his girlfriend up there uh, from here, and then eventually we all ended up coming back. But while I was there trying to get the casino job I did actually meet someone that said that they could get me an interview at the casino and they did and I went in and it was for a hostess job and at the time I desperately needed money to live off of and a hostess job was not gonna you know pay for me to live all by myself and take care of all my animals and everything so I was like man I was really I wanted the the waitress job you know so I went home and then later I started talking to people about it and I found out the way that the hostesses get tipped and they get tipped really well. And I didn't know that. Plus, I could have taken the hostess job and just done it for however long until a waitress job opened up because then they would hire within and, you know, I could have worked it out possibly, but it didn't happen. So anyway... So, I got to California, unloaded my stuff, went into my room, and it was so quiet. Now, I'm a person that likes sound, right? Like, I like the TV on, I like a radio on, I like some kind of sound. I don't like it when it's quiet. I wish I was one of those people that could just sit in a quiet room and read a book, but I can't. And I can't read a book. I mean, uh, I can't read a book. I can read the book, but I can't tell you. I can't retain anything that I read. I have no idea. I'm off, you know, I'm designing restaurants. I'm thinking about clothes. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place, right? So I, um, I sat in that quiet room and I tried to get acc acclimated and 
was excited about that job that I was going to start, which wasn't going to start for like two more weeks or something after I was there. So I figured I had like two weeks vacation, two weeks to go check out California, see the sights, do what I was going to do, you know, because then I was going to be working and I probably wouldn't be able to, you know, do a bunch of boot scooting around. So I really didn't worry and stress about money. I had already given her my rent for the month. Um, it was like really inexpensive and I had brought, you know, money with me that I had saved. And so I thought that I was good for a little bit. And I checked out the mountains and the rivers and I went down the Truckee several times in a raft. Um, the most fun thing that I've ever done in my life. I mean, I like to canoe, like that's my favorite thing. Of course, you know, my back, I can't do any of those things, but um, I did love to canoe and I never thought that I'd like it on a raft because, you know, you have zero control and I would rather be in control. But there's something just special about going down the Truckee and letting the river take you and trying to... Um, you know, like drive through all the boulders, like negotiate yourself to be in the right place so you don't bash into a boulder because there's one every, you know, couple of feet or there's several and there's huge and, you know, sometimes you can push off with your leg or push off with your arm. Um, but I'm short and those rafts are like really big and hard and thick. And so even if I put my arms outside of the raft to try to, y'all can't see what I'm doing, but if I try to, you know, stick them outside of the raft to paddle, I could barely reach the water. So I couldn't really, I had like fingertips to try to paddle with. So you didn't have like a whole lot of control, but you could stand up, you know, right? Just stand up at any time and stop yourself. Well, <laughs> as much as you could, because that river was moving. I mean, if your sunglasses came off, if you lost your water bottle, if anything, if you, if your shirt fell, that was it. Like it was, it was going, it was gone. And there were people they called river rats that used to hang out at certain places where they knew that everybody's stuff would get like dropped off over to the side. And they would just come down. You'd be going down the river and you'd see them. They would just come down and like be collecting everybody's sunglasses, cameras, binoculars, beers, coolers, clothes, rafts, I mean, shoes. You know, you lose everything on the river. So eventually you learn not to take anything that you care about and just I would just bring a bottle of water and a pair of crappy sunglasses and if you bring crappy sunglasses you'll have them all the way to the end if you bring some nice expensive ones they'll be gone in the first couple of minutes and you'll never get them back but anyway so I did lots of fun things and I got to see all kinds of critters I saw deer in the driveway I saw a bear down at the bottom of the property oh god y'all when I saw that bear, I got in my car so fast because the driveway was like almost straight up. I mean, it would have been a great um, place to go sleigh riding in the wintertime, but it was like straight up. And I mean, I could literally get up to 40 miles an hour going up the driveway because it was so long. Y'all, when I saw that bear, we were out on the balcony looking out at the stars and stuff. And somebody said, there's a bear because I had, you know, roommates there too. I had the lady that I lived with and her nephew lived there. And then eventually we had some guy from town live there too. So, um, we cooked every night on the balcony and she, we didn't have TV or cable or anything. So at night we would choose a movie and we would all watch a movie. It was, it was fun. But, um, so we were out on the balcony and I saw that bear and I hauled ass to my car and hauled ass down the driveway and that bear was already gone y'all I just wanted to pull up and say hello to the bear and then I found out what a screeching owl is I don't even was I don't think it was my first night maybe I'd been there two or three nights no it was longer than that because eventually I moved upstairs into the house because I was in the downstairs 
area. Everybody else was upstairs, and I was, um, I was down there, like, with, like, the laundry room, and there was a pool table and, like, a bar and stuff down there. So I was, like, in a side room <laughs> off the bar in, in the pool table area. But eventually, I got to move into a room upstairs, like a proper room, um, with a proper bed because downstairs it was just like a, a mattress on the floor in the corner of a room. I mean, there wasn't a table, there wasn't a lamp, there was nothing in there. But, um, the upstairs room had, you know, a bed and, and tables and a proper closet. So I was like a real person up there and what was I going to say? I was living upstairs for, I forgot the reason why I was telling you all this. But anyway, um, oh, that's what it was. I was living upstairs and the windows were right behind my head, um, right behind where I slept and they were huge and there was no curtains, which was fine because it was way up there. I couldn't see anybody. Nobody could see me, but I could see the stars. And so I would just lay there and look at the stars. I was so happy. I was free. I was on my own. I was in California. California. I didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, I heard this sound that sounded like, I don't know, like a woman being tortured or something really, really bad happening to her. And it went on and on. This was like, I don't know, midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And I thought, dear God, what is that? I started to figure out this is like some kind of a bird, but it was keeping me up and it was ridiculously loud. Like it would scare you every time it did it. And I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go stop this bird. I don't know if I have to throw a rock in the tree or what's going to happen, but this bird needs to shut up. So I hauled butt down the driveway once again. And those trees y'all were so tall there. I was just a little nothing looking up at those trees. And so whatever it was, was yelling from the top of the tree. I couldn't see it. It was so far up. It was so dark. I was so mad. And then I found out the next day from my roommates that that was like a screeching owl. They had a lot of owls around there. And she was showing me a picture of some little bitty white owls that um, were like on some tree stumps in her yard that she had taken a picture of. Oh my God, you've never seen anything so gorgeous. You know, because most owls are a little, you know, scary. But they are so cute and they're like some kind of, they don't live in trees. They live on the ground in stumps or in burrows or some, I don't know. But they're adorable. There was all kinds of wildlife. I saw some birds that were taller than the window of my car. Like, I guess, I don't know, vultures or condor I don't know what they were probably vultures the wingspan I don't even know like I'm gonna go with six feet they were he bigger than any birds I've ever seen in Texas y'all oh my gosh it was so fantastic while it lasted we're gonna have to do a part three in California because I did it again I went way past the t I just want to talk to y'all for like 15 minutes and say goodnight and finish my little story. And there we go. So stay tuned for part three. Y'all have a really good 